My name is Frederick Obermeyer. I'm an investigative reporter and editor for the German daily Süddeutsche Zeitung. To get leaks means that you're visible. Visible in a way like you're in the internet, you're speaking at public discussions, you're out there. You have to present yourself because otherwise informants or whistleblowers won't find you. I am out there to tell and show whistleblowers, hey, you can approach me. These are the topics that I've worked on in the past. These are the ways how you can reach me in a secure way, in an encrypted way. And this is what I'm currently doing. So I think this, my webpage is something like a business card. The downside of that is my contact details are out there. That means people who want to insult me um, can basically call me up. My Signal um, account is connected to my cell phone um, numbers. People can call me up at night, they can send me, can send me annoying SMS, um, but I think that's part of the business. For every 10 people that insult you, you get one good story, and that story is worth it. First of all, I have to check, is the, are the documents authentic? If they are so, are they in the public interest? Then check, are conditions attached to a leak? I always get a little bit nervous and cautious when I hear, oh, you have to publish on a certain day. You have to publish this and that stories because I don't want any conditions apart from source protection being attached to a leak. Otherwise, I would normally shy away. There's always a certain risk of being instrumentalized by a source, an informant or a whistleblower. But I think we should be aware of the fact that every whistleblower has an agenda. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's a hidden agenda. But I think one way of minimizing the risk of being instrumentalized is I decide when I publish. The second is I do decide what I publish and I do never pay money for information. Well, checking the authenticity of a leak is a pain in the ass. <laughs> Sorry for my French, but um, it is not easy because we live in a time where a normal leak is several gigabytes or terabytes of data. So you cannot go through every document. You have to basically take certain data documents and cross-check them. When dealing with such a big leak like the Panama Papers, where we had more than two terabytes of data, um, it brings a certain responsibility. You have to check every document before you publish it. You have to request comment. Give the other side the chance to comment on the documents on what you want to report. Even Vladimir Putin, who is by far not a big friend of the Panama Papers, said in a TV discussion that he thinks um, that the Panama Papers are authentic. We sent a request for comment to the Kremlin, asking Mr. Putin for his friend Sergei Roldugin, his companies and the role of Sergei Roldugin's companies or companies that had a connection to him in the financing of uh, Vladimir Putin's daughter's wedding. Um, we did never get an answer. Um, but we saw that the spokesperson of uh, Mr. Putin, Mr. Peskov, invited journalists to a spontaneous press conference speaking of an information attack from the West. And that was the moment when we realized, okay, they read our email. First of all, big hard drives with a huge capacity, but OCR is crucial. Optical character recognition, it means that you make documents, for example, scan documents searchable, because that's where you start. Then you can terp, type, for example, search terms into a search engine. You can do a batch search where you run huge CSV or Excel files against the data. So that's a good start. Then use visualization tools. Try to visualize um, what you found in there. I prefer always to work in a team. In a team, you're always better. I think you make less mistakes because you already have first instance of fact check within your team. You encourage and push each other because you find something then you tell it your colleague, he or she goes on, proceeds, wants to find something as well. So I think that's and unfolds a certain dynamic that is always very useful. 
it's also good to work within a team. It gives you a certain protection because if it's only you working um, on a story, you can be stopped quite easily. It's easy to do harm to one journalist, but it's already more difficult to do harm to two journalists. Um, it's more difficult to do harm to a dozen of journalists. So that's one of the reasons why I definitely prefer team collaborations, team investigations, and I also think that, that it's the future of journalism, especially of investigative journalism.